Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Seaside Chats with the Salve Admit Guy. I'm the Salve Admit Guy, uh, Jim Fowler, Vice President for Enrollment Management at Salve Regina University in amazing Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, you can follow me at Salve Admit Guy on Twitter and sometimes Instagram. I'm still trying to figure out that platform. It's not, uh, <laughs> I'm just not not my thing, uh, but I know a lot of people are there, so I'm trying to do better. Um, and there you'll find a lot of information about Salve, a lot of information about higher education. Uh, you'll also find occasional treatises on uh, American soccer, uh, politics, theater, and music, uh, which are my passions away from the office. So uh, this evening's presentation, uh, is the Rogers Family Department of Nursing at Salve Regina University. Very excited to have with us Dr. Deborah Cherubini, who is the program chair for the Rogers Family Department of Nursing and uh, is an exceptional professional who has many years of experience, uh, both as a graduate of our program, uh, as well as uh, you, as a faculty member for our program, uh, really a wealth of knowledge about nursing in general and, of course, our program in specific. How are you this evening, Dr. Cherubini? I am doing very well. How are you doing? I'm great. It's a nice night. Took me a few minutes to figure the lighting out in my virtual <laughs> office, even though uh, people are seeing me on the back deck of Ochre Court. In actuality, I am coming to us from my home office. So uh, I, the, the curse of glasses, I was having a glasses glare issue that I had to solve, but <laughs> okay now. Um, so uh, for those that are attending, I know we have a number of folks logged in. Uh, there is a Q&A box. So along the way, if you have questions, by all means, feel free to ask your questions in the Q&A box, and we will try to get to as many of them as possible. But to kick off this evening, uh, Dr. Cherubini, I just want to sort of ask you to share a little bit about your background, your areas of research focus, and uh, a little bit about your experience, uh, both as a nurse and as a nursing educator. Well, sure. Um, so as uh, Jim said, I'm Dr. Deborah Cherubini. I'm the chair of the nursing department, and I am a Salve grad. Um, after I graduated from Salve, I went directly to the Navy for 20 years. Um, my master's is in public health and epidemiology, and my PhD is specifically in nursing education. Um, I have many areas of research, but currently we are uh, working on a project, a research project with uh, two other uh, faculty members on um, clinical competency through simulation um, to increase competency in the clinical environment. Uh, we're just uh, amidst doing that currently, and um, I'm also interested in um, length of uh, completion time, program completion time for our R and BSN students. So we do have four um, nursing programs. Um, so uh, I will tell you that being a Salve graduate, um, Salve still has that same family atmosphere that I had when I went to Salve. Um, so as an educator, it's wonderful to come back and to give back to the organization and to um, be a part of the journey that our students are into their um, BSN. Um, I've had a lot of clinical experience, a lot of uh, experience through the Navy. Um, so I think that that's what helps to uh, make me a more flexible um, faculty member with different specialties um, and uh, provide support to our BSN students. I imagine Navy must expose you to a wide range of healthcare problems and challenges that uh, must give you a really interesting perspective on the way healthcare is administered and, and certainly some more unique healthcare challenges in terms of patient care. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, I've had both uh, experiences in the field on deployment, but also uh, experiences in the clinical environment in large major um, Navy uh, facilities. And the focus is still toward changing um, from chronic care to primary care. And that is a big focus of my practice, um, especially being uh, a specialist in um, public health. 
Um, so that's one of the things that we teach the students that even though they may be doing inpatient nursing or critical care or emergency care, um, their focus still needs to educate the patient on um, preventative care, primary care, and try to get our patients to move from chronic care and not wanting to have assessments and health promotion and preventative services um, to get them toward that so that we can have a healthier patient population. So, sorry, I'm just really quickly responding here to somebody that's having a sound issue uh, mm -hmm. and headphones. Uh, so as you think about sort of Salve's nursing program, a lot of the students that are that are either listening tonight or will be looking at this recording later are going to, in the process of deciding where to apply. And in that process of deciding where to apply, uh, they're looking at a variety of nursing programs. Uh, certainly there are more pro nursing programs cropping up every day at colleges and universities because there is such a demand for nursing uh, and for uh, more advanced healthcare practitioners. Uh, what do you think is particularly notable about Salve's program and, and what really sets Salve's nursing program apart from the nursing programs at other colleges and universities? Well, I will tell you that Salve is a very high touch um, program. I will know your name, your faculty members will know your name. Um, we are very much um, a family oriented. We care about your success. Uh, you will have an advisor. The first uh, semester you uh, will take a uh, introduction to nursing course and you will get an advisor and that advisor will be with you the entire four years and you'll have access to me as well. So we're uh, what we're trying to do is from the minute you walk into the door, we're trying to get you ready for your boards. We're trying to get you ready for that first employment opportunity and then also progress you to your master's degree because your population of uh, new students, nurses are going to need to have a master's degree. So we have a very, um, like I said, strong high touch. We know um, if you need tutoring and help. And it's not just the nursing department, it's Salve in general. Even in your core courses, you will have instructors that are going to be very concerned about your success and will let us know so that we can help you as well. Um, the other thing is we have very small class sizes and very small uh, clinical sizes. Uh, we only have eight students in a clinical, never more than that. And we have uh, never more than 30 uh, students in a uh, class. So you have a lot of interaction with your um, uh, instructors. Um, we have the state of an art, state of art, uh, simulation lab, and we're very um, into making sure that you are clinically competent, so you'll spend a lot of time in the simulation lab. And the other thing is that we guarantee clinical. Many um, programs will not tell you that they don't guarantee clinical, and we will make sure that you will um, have a clinical spot and that you will graduate in four years. Yeah, I think those clinical are really interesting. I've worked at a number of different institutions that have nursing programs, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the the requirements, the, the accreditation requirements, say that uh, you can have clinicals of up to is it 15, almost 20 students, and so uh, it's not unusual at, in a lot of programs for them to max out those clinical spaces as much as they can, so you don't get as much interaction with your preceptor as you would in our program. Absolutely. Um, they do allow a much bigger number and they have to do that because otherwise there's those students, they can possibly not graduate to up to six years. Um, same thing with class sizes such as for chemistry. Um, like I said, you'll never have more than 30 students in your chemistry class, but in another class, you may have up to 260 people in your chemistry class. So. Again, it's not just the nursing department. All of Salve is very geared toward your success and having that high touch where the professor is going to know your name, know your situation, know whether or not you're doing well in a course, and then also know the resources to be able to um, get you tutoring or um, maybe you need some help writing. Um, so um, they'll have the knowledge of the resources that they can um, bring to help you be successful. 
and, and <laughs> that direct entry aspect to our program where when you're admitted to the program, you're in the program, you're guaranteed that opportunity for a clinical placement. I, I've heard a lot of horror stories from students at other institutions who say, you know, I, I went, I thought I was in the program. Then after a year, I was told, no, sorry, you didn't garner a clinical placement. You have to change your major. You have to do something else. Um, mm -hmm. You never want to see that for a student. If you think you're going into nursing, you should be able to go into nursing and be able to stick with that for as long as you choose to do that, provided you make the grade, of course. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and and uh, so that's one of the reasons why our program is as selective as it is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one student is asking me here how many students are admitted into the program. Um, and I can tell you that uh, our admit rate on applications is about 50%. Uh, so it is a, a very selective program. One and two get admitted to the program. Uh, ultimately, we're bringing in a class of about 85 uh, first year nurses each year. Uh, and in order to do that we're usually admitting uh, somewhere around 400 students uh, because those students do have a choice uh, of programs and, and others will choose other programs for a variety of reasons, uh, but uh, we are pretty good at uh, hitting that target in terms of those 85 students because our program is in such good demand. Mm -hmm. uh, you had mentioned sort of the, the emphasis on graduate education that mm -hmm. has grown within the nursing field over the last decade mm -hmm. uh, as part of that graduate education. Obviously, there's there's got to be an emphasis on uh, research. Um, what opportunities are there for undergraduates to do nursing research, research at Salve? There's a lot of opportunities. We belong to the um, the National Student Nursing Association, and we actually have a delegate in the state and we have about six students that will attend the conference and do a poster presentation on their research. We have other students that are currently doing research on uh, pet therapy to decrease stress in the student population. Um, so there are um, many opportunities for students to be able to work with faculty members and um, be able to do research projects with their faculty members. I know for me, one of the days on campus is SRU Day, uh, which is for those that don't know and haven't heard about SRU Day yet, it's it's the our opportunity in the spring for all of our students to come together and showcase the research and activities they've been doing in their academic programs. And I'm always amazed when I go into Rogers Recreation Center and I see the huge number of poster presentations done by our science students and our nursing students. Mm -hmm. And the level of research is really quite astounding. Um, there's some really advanced stuff that's happening there. Mm -hmm. And I'm always amazed at the level of uh, acumen that our nurses uh, project in terms of their ability to manage not mm -hmm. only a very demanding academic schedule, a strong clinical experience, but also be able to produce such high level research oftentimes alongside a faculty member. And it's also um, with professional organizations. So the research gets shared with, again, poster presentations for Sigma, which is an international um, nursing excellence. Um, and then also, like I said, NSNA, the, um, the Student Nurse Association, these are professional organizations. And we also are building your resume when you come into Salve. So a section of your resume needs to have the professional organizations that you are part of being a professional nurse. Um, so we um, have students already embedded into these organizations prior to graduation. So one of the great things about our nursing program is, is the labs. Uh, you know, we've got some really incredible labs. The, all the labs on campus, both the, the nursing labs and the science labs, have gone over quite a transformation in recent years. Uh, what is it about our labs that make them so state-of-the-art, and, and how have the renovations really enhanced the educational experience for our, our, our student nurses? We actually have very high level mannequins. They're called 3G mannequins. And basically these mannequins do everything but get up and walk out of the bed. They talk, they bleed, they sweat. Um, so 
Uh, we also have um, maternity mannequins that actually give birth. Um, 80% 80 80% of the NCLEX exam is med surge. So the students need to have this simulation training before they go out into their clinical setting so that they are ready for the clinical environment. Simulation allows the student to practice different procedures um, so that they are more prepared when they go in the clinical environment and so that they can um, be in these med surge areas and then uh, be able to move on and be successful on their NCLEX. Um, we have five of the um, 3G mannequins and then we have about six of the 2G mannequins with, which are also um, uh, for procedural mannequins. Um, what's nice is that the students get, again, very small clinical groups in there, and it's a, about joining this environment to their coursework. So they will have a coursework in holistic health, they will learn the different body systems, and then they'll get up and do the assessment on the mannequin. Um, we also have the ability to record um, the uh, the interactions that the students are having with their procedures so that they can go back and do a debriefing. Uh, studies show it's very important to do a debriefing so that they can learn the things that they could have improved upon or how they could have done something different. Um, so we have that. We have a um, voice control and case studies um, that uh, uh, are very uh, 3D virtual case studies for the students to be able to use so um, they can have a like real life interaction with that mannequin. Um, so they, again, one, there's a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one attention as far as procedures. We have different um, simulation uh, labs in the evening for the students to participate one-on-one -on -one with instructors. Um, so uh, we do have a state-of-the-art lab I'm always oh, amazed. Yeah. It, it, it almost yeah. feels like walking into a hospital setting. I mean, you look one way you've got a birthing unit. You look another way. There's an isolation unit. You almost feel like you're in an ICU. Uh, it's really quite fascinating and 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 a bit humbling to realize just mm -hmm. how accurately the facilities have been put in place to replicate the true clinical experience that uh, nurses will experience in the in the inpatient and outpatient setting. Yes, all the labs look just like in a, a real hospital room. Um, even our supply closet looks just like a regular supply closet that you would see in the hospital. Um, the only difference is we have TVs for the case studies for the virtual uh, scenarios. But um, yep, it looks just like a real hospital. The mannequins, again, they speak and they act just like real patients. Um, so we even have an isolation room. So especially now with this uh, op tempo of COVID, Ebola, um, TB, things that we have to practice with um, uh, infection control. So we have um, an isolation room for students to learn how to don and doff their um, PPE uh, and then take care of patients who are in an isolation status. Um, just to come back to the conversation we were having about clinicals, I, I do have a couple questions here from students uh, mm -hmm. asking about where our students do clinicals, uh, what hospitals, what cities, what towns, uh, you know, how far afield from uh, the campus are mm -hmm. clinical settings held? So uh, we have about 58 different clinical settings. Um, uh, the farthest away that a, a student would be asked to drive to go to clinical would be uh, about a 50 minute drive. We have some on the Cape, uh, but most of them are no more than a 20 to 30 minute uh, drive. We have clinicals in both Rhode Island and Massachusetts. Um, we have large hospitals, small hospitals, uh, medium size, inpatient, outpatient, uh, critical care, neonatal care. Um, uh, mental health and aging and end of life. Uh, so um, uh, Rhode Island Hospital, uh, St. Luke's, St. Anne's, Charlton Memorial, um, Hasbro Children's Hospital. Uh, we also have a lot of clinicals in the school setting for pediatrics because now uh, in this current uh, time, um, 
handicapped children or children with special needs go to regular need schools that might need um, feeding tubes or um, they may need different medications. They may have special medical conditions. So we have some in schools. We have home health care, um, hospice. We go to PACE up in uh, Providence. Um, so several different locations and uh, several different opportunities for specialties. Wonderful. <laughs> having that many, whoops, sorry, having that many um, clinical settings must allow students to see a really wide variety of patients, a real wide variety of uh, prognoses in terms of different mm -hmm. types of presentations from different different patient populations. Uh, mm -hmm. There must be a big advantage in that in the training. Absolutely. And the other thing that we that sets us apart as far as clinical goes is that um, students will start clinical in their sophomore year um, as opposed to the junior year. Um, so uh, you'll have clinical uh, a clinical uh, rotation um, your sophomore year. You'll have three clinical rotations in your junior year and five clinical rotations in your senior year, as well as a senior capstone, which is 96 hours of clinical. Um, so uh, you, it's a one on one with a preceptor and one of our faculty members. So um, you have, again, that one on one attention um, to, to really hone in on your med surge skills. There are a variety of settings for our students. They um, med search, like I said, we want med search as much as possible because of the amount of questions that are on the NCLEX for med search. But many of our students go to the emergency room, the ICU, uh, oncology, wound care, um, maternity, pediatrics, etc. Um, a wide variety of specialties that the students will be exposed to. Wow, I mean, with that many clinical experiences from sophomore on, how many hours of clinical does the student ultimately complete by the time they graduate? It's over 600 hours. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, it, it, and uh, although in some ways not surprising, because every time I talk with a, a graduate of Salve's nursing program, one of the stories that I hear time and time and time again is that when they get into their first job, and they go into that hospital setting, there's always that sort of required training period. Mm -hmm. um, and as with most medical care settings, there's sort of this stage training where you can sort of accelerate through or sort of take the more remedial track. And what I hear time and time again is that Salve graduates always go through that sort of accelerated and then get right into practice very, very quickly because mm -hmm. they're so prepared and ready. Whereas mm -hmm. what I hear from our graduates is that graduates of other programs, oftentimes they may have to remediate and take longer before they can sort of be left to their own to practice and effectively. Yeah, our students are requested by these facilities that they go to for their clinical. Um, we actually, um, ha ha I sit on a board where I have um, all of the uh, senior nurses of the hospitals that are in our area, and they are always asking me for Salve grad uh, resumes um, in their junior year. Uh, I'd say 35 to 40 percent of our students are employed before their senior year. And right after graduation, we probably have about 90% that are employed. And then by, by the third month after graduation, 100% are employed. Um, if they are not employed, it's because they've taken their time and being more selective. We've had many students call me and tell me that they have three different job offers and they're not sure which one to take. Um, our students also, uh, the, the, this past uh, graduating class, um, they got a lot of specialty positions, ER, pediatrics at Yale, um, neonatal ICU at uh, Mass, uh, Mass General, um, ICU positions. Um, so hospitals want our Salve grads, and a Salve grad is considered to be a higher competent student nurse, um, a higher competent graduate nurse. Um, than some of the other facilities that um, are in the area. Yeah, you know, for a few years, I mean, for, for sort of uh, 
uh, clarity for the people listening, uh, you may note that I, I throw around some words. I, I like to pretend I'm a medical professional. Uh, it's really more by osmosis. Uh, I'm, I'm married to a physician, so I've been uh, acquainted with the, with the healthcare system uh, for quite a while and worked at a hospital for, for a little bit. And, and one of the things I, I know a lot about the hiring processes of hospitals is it's very rare actually for a nurse right out of undergraduate to be able to get a job in obstetrics or get a job in NICU um, mm -hmm. or get a job in some of the surgical specialties because they typically want to hire more experienced nurses for those, those sorts of high competition areas. So it's really no Notable that so many of our graduates are able to get those types of positions right out of college. Yep, and many of them, even after they've graduated, have gone directly into their master's degree. Um, so they're able to do an online master's um, and be able to work um, while they are um, progressing in their career. Um, I know one of the questions I'm sure people have is, you know, right now we're in this weird, not sure what's going to happen next with the pandemic and not entirely sure, you know, I think we all hope that this time next year we'll be back to some sense of new normal where we can count on being on campus in a more traditional way, uh, even though at Salve we, we have been able to be on campus this semester, which is which is a blessing, uh, and I think really speaks to uh, the ability and, and willingness of our students to take the appropriate precautions and, and make in-person education happen, uh, but it certainly creates challenges for clinicals and, and things of that nature. Uh, what adjustments have had to make for learning this year within a pandemic environment for uh, nursing students who uh, really in, in some ways are being put on the front lines of this uh, even before they graduate? Well, I will tell you that we have been very lucky. We, um, we are always searching for new clinical uh, placements. We're thought of very highly in this, in the clinical training environment, and we have not had to make any adjustments for clinical our um, students have been able to go to their clinical locations. Some of them have asked for even a smaller clinical size, so four students. So what we have been able to get extra spots at our clinical locations so that we can accommodate having uh, clinical groups of only four students. Um, so we've been extremely lucky in being able to maintain our um, clinicals without any problems. Same thing for our simulation clinicals. We've been able to maintain those. And as far as the classes go, we have been doing a hybrid format where the students, half of the students are in class and then the other half are, are mainstreamed or live streamed. And then um, they flip on, on another day where the, the ones that were live stream are now in the classroom. So um, things are going, even though we have a pandemic going on, things are going really well. Very, very proud of um, our ability to be able to um, maintain our clinical, especially. So not surprising, we're getting a lot of questions about NCLEX pass rates, because I know that that's the, oftentimes the benchmark on which uh, many programs are judged by prospective students. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how uh, our program works to prepare students for the next NCLEX? I know we're very successful in that area. Yeah, our NCLEX pass rate is 94.34%. Um, that was students... precise. I'm sorry? Uh, that, that was very precise. Yes, yes. I'm very proud of that number. So, um, but the students, again, we start prepping you for that NCLEX as soon as you come into the program. Um, you will start getting HESI testing in your courses. That some courses are tied to a HESI test, and then all of your um, exams are geared to be in the same format of a NCLEX question. Um, so between HESI testing, you also get live review, um, which are questions that, again, progress just like a um, uh, NCLEX question. Um, and then you also get two semesters in your senior year of NCLEX prep. 
um, where it's intense questions, um, learning strategies, testing strategies. And then you also get a three day live review where it's three days of intense um, going over all of the uh, questions that in the different uh, systems that you would have on the NCLEX, MedSurg, um, different specialties, psych, aging, public health, leadership and management um, uh, to prepare you for the exam. So um, we're very proud of the our testing. We're very proud of the um, amount of um, studying that the students get and the preparation that they get to um, do well in their exam. Uh, there's a really specific program uh, question here with regards to preparation for uh, the NCLEX. Uh, does Salve use ATI throughout the program to help study? No, we use HESI. Um, so there, there's, you can either, some schools use ATI, we use the um, HESI testing, which is similar to ATI, um, but uh, HESI testing actually has been researched as opposed to other um, testing such as a, a, ATI that has not had research on the success rate of um, pass rates for NCLEX. Um, there's a number of questions here that I want to go through, but I do just want to clarify one thing on the NCLEX question. That NCLEX pass rate that you're pointing out, that's the first time pass rate, right? So I imagine that there's more students that ultimately pass it later on, maybe after two or three tries. Yes, we. Uh, that is the first time, but we uh, typically will have 100% pass rate um, if, a, if a student does need to take the test more than once. Um, so uh, in terms of, uh, go through some questions we have here, uh, in terms of study abroad, semester abroad, is it possible? Obviously the nursing cur curriculum is pretty rigorous. Uh, there's a lot of demands of time with the clinical, with the sequence of courses. Can a student do any study abroad at Salve? They can. Um, you can do, you can do a, uh, we have international service learning that uh, we offer uh, the, uh, spring after um, the junior uh, year where we go to Ireland um, and uh, you can use other um, service learning programs or other um, international learning uh, abroad um, during the December time frame, December break. Um, it, you, you can certainly go during the year, but then you would be behind. So um, unfortunately, you would need to take either that summer session um, or the uh, Christmas session. We also have a um, service to the Dominican Republic uh, where the students are able to go to the Dominican Republic for eight weeks in the summer. Um, and so they do nursing as well as um, a minor in Spanish. And I often hear from graduates that those experiences were some of the most valuable experiences for them, uh, in part because of that opportunity to uh, really put that medical Spanish into practice. Uh, they often find that that comes in very useful in their patient care setting. And I've also heard from those that uh, went uh, to Ireland, that was sort of a transformative experience for them. It's really great that we have those opportunities. Uh, someone here was asking uh, for just a quick repeat of the percentage of nursing students that had job offers prior to senior year. I think you said it was like 35%. Yeah, about 35 to 40%. Um, they, uh, we, uh, we guide in um, students to have a, a junior internship in typically the hospital that they're doing their junior internship at um, over the summer hires them prior to um, them coming back their senior year, just waiting for the students to get their uh, NCLEX results. Wonderful. Um, there's a question here from a student asking about their visiting on Saturday and uh, can they make sure that they're with a nursing student. Uh, I would tell you, Sarah, please contact the Office of Admissions directly. Uh, maybe contact your admissions counselor directly and they will work with you uh, to hook you up with a, a nursing student if there's a nursing student on this weekend giving tours. Chances are there are. We have a lot of nursing students that are also uh, student ambassadors, which is great. Uh, I'm just going to 
scroll through here and see about any other questions that we haven't addressed yet. Um, we've talked a lot about the NCLEX. We've talked a lot about sort of the state of the world. Um, mm -hmm. Question about sort of jobs beyond sort of the Northeast. Um, you know, I think one of the one of the questions a lot of students have is about, you know, whether or not they go to a school, if they're just going to be able to get jobs regionally, or if the institution has a national reputation for job placement. This student in particular is asking about job options in Philadelphia. Uh, my understanding is that Salve's really strong reputation and long history mm -hmm. of offering nursing uh, works to our advantage in that area. I think, there's a lot, as I mentioned early on, there's a lot of nursing programs sort of cropping up now because there's demand mm -hmm. for it, but they don't have that longevity, that history of being able to say, hey, we have a successful program. And so that's going to leave some seeds of doubt for employers. Um, I, I, my understanding is that uh, nationally, uh, students can really go anywhere. Uh, is that your understanding as well? Yeah, we have students getting job placements as far as Washington State. So um, we've been uh, very fortunate. Uh, that's one of the major benefits, I believe, of our program is uh, we, we care about you getting employed and making sure that we are advising you to um, build that resume that I was talking about when you first come into the program so that you are you are someone uh, that that organization is looking for because you've had the clinical hours, you've had the professional experiences, you've had the clinical um, locations, a variety of locations that we offer. Um, so you really are more of a well-rounded student and you're also an academic and um, they're looking for students who are going to go on and advance their education and are prepared for that next step to get their master's degree. Um, so uh, you're definitely more well-rounded and looked upon very highly for employment. Um, Casey asks a very terrific question. I love this question. Uh, she says that she currently attend, attends a Mercy High School. I'd love to know which Mercy High School. Uh, if it's Mercy in Connecticut, I'm a Xavier grad for what it's worth. Uh, and my nieces uh, are Mercy students right now at Mercy in Connecticut. Uh, and she's wondered, she says, you know, she's very familiar with the Mercy core values and critical concerns. How are these incorporated within the nursing program and the curriculum? So um, they are incorporated in the different assignments. They're incorporated in the different um, lectures, the discussions, and we even incorporate them into the case studies because, again, we're embedded into our community. Uh, we want to make sure that we are supporting the critical concerns within our community. Um, so uh, the program is very well-rounded and focused on our mission statement. And it's important that you are embedded in your community because if you were to look at the mission statement of any hospital, one of their uh, mission statement values is going to be around addressing the concerns of the community and their um, health concerns. So uh, again, we mirror um, our program after what hospitals are looking for, as well as instilling our Mercy mission in our um, program. Um, good question here about sort of workload and the ability that students have to handle the course load. Uh, obviously, we have a pretty rigorous curriculum within the nursing program that comes with the selectivity, that comes with the strong reputation. Uh, but we're also a liberal arts institution that has a core curriculum. Mm -hmm. And that core curriculum is essential to our philosophy about educating students. Uh, in your experience, uh, how have students been able to manage the uh, challenge associated with handling handling that rigorous of a course curriculum? Well, I was going to mention when you mentioned that there were um, students who are working this weekend for um, admissions, um, you because of the high touch and the amount of uh, relationship that you have with your faculty, you do get the um, attention so that you can be able to do um, you're say a a minor or be on one of our uh, athletic teams or in the theater, um, music uh, say music minor, art minor, dance minor, um, Spanish, uh, psychology. 
Um, you, you have such a high attention from your instructors that they are there to help tutor you. They're there to spend some one on one time with you or, or get tutors for you if you need them. Um, and it's all about time management. We also have a mentorship program with the nursing students. So the seniors uh, mentor the sophomores, the juniors mentor the freshmen. So again, time management, um, organizing your schedule, and then uh, um, introducing them to all of the different opportunities for the students as far as minors and committees and uh, sports that they can have, uh, have an opportunity to be a part of. Um, so I think that it is doable. A Salve nurse can have, again, we want to add to that resume, a Salve nurse is able to handle that coursework um, so you can do more than just nursing, and we want you to do more than just nursing because we want to build that resume. Here, need. But there you go. You know, I um, actually teach one of the uh, first year experience courses that all students take as a freshman. It's a one credit transitional course that helps students adapt to the college experience and make sure that they understand some of the processes and challenges associated with transitioning from secondary school to, to high school to co college, I should say. Um, and one of the things I always say to my nursing students early on is, you would not have get into the nursing program at Salve if we didn't know that you had the preparation and the academic ability to be successful. Um, and so while those first couple of weeks, I think can be a little bit daunting when you transition to college and you look at the curriculum in front of you, you say, oh my gosh, am I gonna be able to handle this? This sounds so rigorous. Our nurse, if you're getting in the nursing program, you deserve to be there. Um, and Absolutely. We a really good job of uh, screening you, of going through the admissions process and making sure that you're going to be successful. We would not bring anybody into the nursing program at Salve that we didn't think could handle the curriculum uh, because we want those students to graduate, to graduate on time, to go out to be successful mm -hmm. in their jobs. And, and we're, we're pretty good at that piece of it. Mm hmm Absolutely, absolutely. If you get into the program, you belong there and you are ready for that rigorous workload. Um, there's a question here about uh, light, living on campus. Do the nursing students live together? Uh, coming in as a freshman uh, in terms of housing, you do have an opportunity if you know someone to request each other to live together in campus housing. Uh, but it is certainly not unusual after the freshman year for uh, nursing majors to befriend each other in the classroom and choose to live together. Uh, also, I'd certainly find with upper class students that uh, a lot of nurses, nursing students students tend to like to live together because uh, they have unique challenges uh, that yeah. they can understand, like getting up at five o'clock in the morning, which is not typical of most college students, uh, but nursing students sometimes for clinical reasons have to have mm -hmm. live some really strange hours. Uh, and so uh, I, I do see a lot of nursing students choosing to live together. Yes, a lot of the students do live together, um, especially after that freshman year, um, and then especially junior year, um, especially with clinicals, um, traveling to clinicals, they like to live together because they all have to get up early to go to clinical or they're going to um, have an afternoon or a weekend clinical and it's nice to be able to carpool with each other. Um, I do want to just take a moment to address, because there's a couple questions here about uh, admissions and admissions process. We've mentioned the rigor and the selectivity of the program. Obviously, this is a unique year. Uh, prior to this year, uh, we have, while Salve is a test optional institution, uh, we have required SATs or ACTs for admission uh, to the nursing program. Uh, this year uh, is a unique year. Uh, we know that there are challenges with the SAT and the ACT. Uh, there's been the vast majority of the uh, the testing environments have canceled. Uh, there have not been opportunities for many students to take tests. Uh, and so for this year, uh, we are taking a test optional approach with the nursing program. I want to assure all the students listening, either live tonight or we'll be logging in later and listening to this, that if you are not able to take the SAT this year or you choose not to take the SAT this year, that will not count against you in the admissions process. Uh, we 
we've spent a lot of time over this summer as an admission staff going through and doing a regression analysis of the students that we have previously admitted. And we know which students based on their academic record on their coursework uh, will be able to be admitted to the program and be successful and frankly those that won't uh, and in the cases of those that won't that doesn't necessarily mean you won't be admitted to salve we uh, in many cases we have students that may not meet the admissions criteria for the nursing program, but whom we very much want to have at Salve. And there are many other curricular areas that uh, students that may have an interest in nursing uh, will have an interest in. Uh, and so we encourage students to still consider Salve, even if they don't get it in the nursing program. Uh, we do have a deadline for nursing. However, we do ask students that are applying to the nursing program to apply by the early action one deadline that's coming up on November 1st. Uh, and the reason for that is because the, we do get so many applications for the nursing program. We need time to appropriately evaluate, especially this year uh, to make sure that and make sure that we can get you decisions out in a timely fashion. So uh, know that if you have not taken the SAT or the ACT, you couldn't do it or, you know, just circumstances just aren't going to allow it or you just don't feel comfortable doing it. Not going to matter this year. We will accept your application. We will review your application without those tests and do apply early action by November 1st. So those are those are two really important considerations. Uh, there was another question that cropped up here. I just need to scroll down and find it. If I can, oh, it may have popped up in the chat. That's why I can't find it. Um, oh, great question here. Um, obviously, nursing is typically a, a very uh, female dominated uh, curricular area. Uh, what's the percentage of, our, of male students within our nursing program? Uh, it's about 15%. 10, 10 to 15 to percent, depending on the year, uh, but the number keeps growing every year. Yeah, and I, I find that oftentimes for employment, uh, male nurses are, are quite in demand uh, for uh, a, a number of different areas. Um, you know, th there's a variety of different specialties that that tend to attract more male nurses than female nurses and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but, uh, but there's plenty of, um, you know, male role models as well, because, again, you're going to be taking your liberal arts courses um, and sports and committees. So there's plenty of um, male role models as well as your other faculty members. So as we come down to the end here, Deb, we're, we're running out of time uh, in the evening. We've had a lot of great questions. I'm sure we'll have a lot more uh, going forward in the coming weeks. Um, but I'm wondering if, you know, just ending tonight, if you can share some stories about your experiences with uh, recent Salve students and graduates and, and some of the particularly notable things that they're doing that uh, you think that this uh, group of students learning about Salve maybe for the first time might want to hear about. Well, I think what one of the things I'm most proud about with our students is that they um, are going straight into specialty positions. We have um, a student that is on the neonatal uh, graduate program uh, at uh, MGH. We have um, a uh, student that is in the uh, pediatric emergency room at Yale New Haven Hospital. Um, Many of our students have gone into St. Hans ER or telemetry unit. Um, uh, I would say that, uh, again, uh, we have students that have gone on to graduate programs who have graduated and gone right into our graduate nursing program. Uh, right now, we have six uh, prior senior grads that are going to be um, uh, getting their uh, family nurse practitioner, and we just graduated eight um, prior nursing students that um, have gone on to get their DNP. Um, so um, we're very proud of the uh, the uh, opportunities that our students have had in these specialty areas. Um, we've had students have gone on to also um, get. Uh, graduate nurse internships in the VA as well. Um, and certainly we have several of our graduates that are on the front lines with our COVID population. 
Yeah, I know we've heard a lot of uh, a lot of stories within our alumni newsletter uh, about students down in New York City, especially uh, when things first spiked down there. Uh, we had a number of graduates taking leadership roles uh, in combating that. Uh, it really was quite inspiring uh, to see just how amazing uh, and how active our nursing graduates are, uh, many of whom also go on to administrative positions uh, and in, in a lot of cases uh, become even and hospital presidents and CEOs. It's really quite remarkable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Deb, thank you so much for uh, taking time this evening to uh, talk with me and uh, by extension, uh, the students that are here this evening uh, learning more about our program. Again, I encourage you, uh, if you're listening tonight or listening uh, later via Memorex, uh, that's a reference that none of you will get because you're not old enough. Uh, but <laughs> if, you, uh, to, uh, if you're interested in the nursing program, certainly get that application in as soon as possible. The key for that is to submit the application. Supporting materials can come later, but get that application in so that we know where you're interested and we can follow up with you. Uh, if you have additional questions after tonight, please feel free to contact your admissions counselor. They will make sure that they get your questions answered for you or get you in touch with Dr. Cherubini or another member of the nursing department uh, so that they can answer those questions for you. Uh, it's really been a, a wonderful opportunity to have this, this really great discussion about uh, really Salve Signature Program. Uh, there are a few programs in the country as remarkable or with as strong of a reputation as Salve's nursing department has. Uh, and so I'm excited that everyone here is considering us uh, and I look forward to hearing that uh, you are going to be applying to us. Uh, Dr. Cherubini, thank you again. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Uh, thank you to you all too. of our thank guests. For the opportunity. And, um, I hope to be able to see everyone on campus sometime in the future. Have a great night. Yeah. Thank you.